The Metal Gear Solid Master Collection is coming out this October, and the number one thing people are mad about on the Steam forums is Konami's decision to not add keyboard and mouse support. So I did it for them. Using a gimmicks adapter, I was able to play MGS3 on a PlayStation 3 with my keyboard and mouse, but was it worth it? Well, spoiler alert, I did this in 2020 as well and it was absolutely terrible. But this time, I've made a few changes behind the scenes, so now the game is playable, and this is my experience. The Virtuous mission was pretty uneventful other than some bad movement and jaggy lines, and I learned just how bad navigating the menus is with keyboard and mouse. I really wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. After retracing my still jaggy steps from the Virtuous mission, Ocelot Unit was surprisingly normal, but every bit of it was just a little bit harder because of the restrictions of 8-way movement, paired with the fact that aiming an MGS3 isn't very precise even with a controller. So converting mouse movements to controller inputs really messes with my expectations. I was surprised the Ocelot Unit went as well as it did. I was even surprised at the time, see? Can't believe I got that. After nearly reenacting that part of Star Wars where Palpatine shocks Mace Windu, twice. I finally made it to Ocelot, where I spent an inordinate amount of time just trying not to mess up. Only to mess up anyway. With Ocelot out of the way, plus stumbling in the caves for longer than needed, I eventually found my way to the pain, which is where things could easily go wrong. I have to be quick to make sure he doesn't use any extra shields, otherwise I won't have enough stun grenades for the end. Quick reloading is way harder than I would have expected. It would require some good coordination to master this. Anyway, all I did was stay in first person to avoid the bullet bees and blast the fool. When he did that roll, I was really worried he'd use another shield, but I just got that last hit in in time. You'd be amazed how much harder even the simple things become on a keyboard. Just swimming in a straight line towards the goal here was impossible. Everything between here and the fear was pretty normal, at least for the speedrun route, but I definitely wouldn't want to imagine playing this casually with keyboard and mouse. The fear fight required some real brain power, I'm surprised I didn't mess this up. If I had waited just a split second to throw that stun, there's no chance I would have done this fight right. I'm proud of this one, it took a lot of coordination, but I got the railing grab in Warehouse 2. I really cooked the end bad, pretty much right away. I thought I was sufficiently hidden behind the tree, then got shot twice. Dude absolutely ventilated me. But I was desperate to finish the fight, I even tried curing. That wasn't enough though, so I had to cut my losses and try again. The second time around, a few stun grenades and the glizzy did the trick. I just hope this guy's DNA isn't going to be used to make an e-girl or something a few years from now. I think this is the world's first W ladder on a PS3, by the way. I think that should stand for something. Throughout the entire mountain section, my greatest fear was rolling off the cliff, because if you have the box on, Snake doesn't grab the ledge, he just falls to his death. But it actually went pretty smooth aside from missing the first guard. This is not gonna work. It worked! Uh oh. You saw nothing. Perfect Fury, first try, obviously. Dude was honestly pretty easy, he kind of just stood there. Alright, no one actually expected the Fury to go well. This fight has like a 5% success rate even on controller. Obviously I cooked the fight pretty hard. But I didn't die, and that's what matters, as I've just decided. On my first try at Rykov, I was very sad to learn that 8-way movement isn't enough to be able to auto-aim on Rykov. That's not good. I tried to resort to the old faithful, actually aiming like a normal person, but that didn't go so well. Man. After one Hail Mary, I proudly said, That'll do. And immediately learned that it would in fact not do. I must admit, I've had better Rykov captures. Death is imminent. Oh, look at my health! Look at my health! After causing one room to account for almost half of my total time loss in the run, I cut my losses again and tried one more time. I got the world's first keyboard box glide, but I'll be honest, with how long it took me, I'm not sure I actually saved any time. Post-torture, after aggressively not petting the dog, I'm finally able to escape Grozningrad, and I was feeling pretty confident. So I went for the log roll. I believe! Uh-oh. 
I believe. Uh, uh, oh. In my defense, that's really hard. And most people don't go for it even in ordinary runs, but I'm not a quitter. I did my final menu for the rest of the game and prepared to put a C3-shaped hole in some fuel tanks. No, wait, it's a butterfly-shaped hole, apparently. Got you this time. But it doesn't matter because I almost threw the whole room because I was taking so long, I thought this guy would be out of my way before I got to him. That can be a problem. Still, I got the job done, fought Volgan, and immediately did some slight cookage because I forgot that I actually need to hold the right mouse to aim. Oh, great. Make up for a bad phase one, I had an exceptionally quick phase two because of a lucky headshot. That was quick. Guess that made up for phase one. Absolutely nothing happens during most of bike chase. Seriously, I just wait for Eva to drive me around and I only need to shoot literally five times. I was really wondering if I would actually get the damage I needed on the Shagohad before the fight, but I did. Getting this damage on the runway is really important, because it removes an entire cycle during the fight. I shot my boy Caro for good luck, as the realization sank in that I would have to do a Shagohad loop on keyboard and mouse. Uh oh, that's early. It worked! I can't believe this is working. Oh. Migasa do thing. Uh. World's first Shagohad loop on a keyboard, let's go. It was a super iffy loop, but clearly the Karaton blessed me with the luck I needed because I got the loop first try. Wait, no, it's... Then it was back to doing more absolutely nothing for five and a half minutes straight. Seriously, that's how long it is until Eva Escort starts. When it finally did start, I fed Eva early so that way I wouldn't have to later, gave her a Hello Kitty band-aid for her impalement wound and told her to walk it off, then promptly abandoned her because she teleports to me when I trigger the next cutscene anyway. After some completely normal escorting, there was only one thing left and I wasn't sure how it would go. It's easy to throw a good run at the boss by just shooting slightly wrong, and since you don't have a lot of time to recover from a missed shot, it can cost you a lot of time. My first shot landed fine, but my second one was a pixel off her face, but I made sure to do it right the second time, looped her, and finished the fight. Can confirm you cannot press E to kill the boss. I shot the boss, watched the credits, and finished Metal Gear Solid 3 on keyboard and mouse in 1 hour and 18 minutes. For reference, I can normally do this in 1 hour and 10 minutes without issue on a controller. So in conclusion, should you play MGS3 with a keyboard and mouse? No, I don't think you should. Which begs the question, why do people want to so badly? I suspect that most people who want keyboard and mouse support don't just want keyboard and mouse support, they want the game to be substantially changed to make keyboard and mouse good, like adding over-the-shoulder aiming, moving while aiming, and removing the Snake Eater camera. In which case, you should just get the remake, which will have those things anyway. The Steam forums are rife with armchair experts saying that adding keyboard and mouse support is easy, and that Konami's being lazy or cheap by not adding support, even going so far as to revise history, trying to convince people that MGS1 and 2's PC ports had mouse support, which they didn't, except to swing the sword in MGS2. The fact is, MGS3's game mechanics don't lend the game well to supporting keyboard and mouse controls without major modification. So remember, the next time someone tells you about a dozen N64 and PS1 FPS's, RTS's, and point and clicks that were given keyboard and mouse controls just fine, remind him that MGS3 isn't any of those.